Hi, Mr. B here. A rate law expresses the relationship of the rate of a reaction to the rate constant and the concentration of the reactants raised to some power. In this video, I will explain how to calculate a rate law for a chemical reaction as well as determine the rate of a reaction at any concentration of the reactant. Consider the simple reaction where reactant A produces product B. In this reaction, the initial rate is related to the concentration of reactant A. Therefore, we may say that the rate is proportional to the concentration of reactant A. In a reaction where the rate is proportional to the concentration of the reactant, a proportionality constant may be calculated. In other words, we may rewrite that the rate is equal to a proportionality constant times the concentration of reactant A. In this particular case, the proportionality constant may be calculated as follows, where K is equal to the rate divided by the concentration of reactant A. The units for K will be calculated by simply dividing the units for rate, which are molar per second, by the units for concentration, which is molar. By dividing these two terms, the units for the rate constant in this particular case will be 1 over second or second to the minus 1. As a practical example, consider the reaction between chlorine gas and chlorine dioxide to produce the compound chloryl fluoride. The rate law for this reaction may be written as follows, where rate is equal to K times the concentration of chlorine gas raised to some power times the concentration of chlorine dioxide raised to some power. In a rate law, the exponents used for each of the reactants is not based on the molar ratio in the balanced equation. The exponents must be calculated by experimentation. Suppose an experiment was executed three times. In each case, vary in the concentration of the reactants. In the first trial, the concentration of fluorine gas is 0 0.01 molar. The concentration of chlorine dioxide is 0 0.01 molar. In the second trial, the concentration of chlorine gas is 0 0.01 molar. But this time, the concentration of chlorine dioxide has been changed to 0 0.04 molar. And in the third trial, the concentration of fluorine gas is now 0.02 molar, and the concentration of chlorine dioxide is 0.01 molar. During each trial, an initial rate was calculated. In the first case, or trial one, the initial rate was found to be 1.2 times 10 to the minus three. In the second trial, the initial rate was found to be 4.8 times 10 to the minus 3. And in the last trial, the initial rate was found to be 2.4 times 10 to the minus 3. This information may now be used to determine the rate law. During trials 1 and 2, the concentration of the fluorine gas remains constant while 
the concentration of chlorine dioxide quadruples. Meanwhile, the initial rates went from 1.2 times 10 to the minus 3 to 4.8 times 10 to the minus 3. This information may now be used to calculate the exponent for the concentration of chlorine dioxide in the rate law. At this point, simply divide the rate determined in trial 2 by the rate determined in trial 1. In other words, divide 4.8 times 10 to the minus 3 by 1.2 times 10 to the minus 3 and the factor is 4. Also, divide the concentrations in trial 2 compared to the concentration in trial 1. The concentration of chlorine dioxide in trial 2 was 0 0.04. The concentration of chlorine dioxide in trial 1 was 0 0.01. This will also give a factor of 4. To determine the exponent for chlorine dioxide, simply raise the change in concentration of chlorine dioxide to the x power and set that equal to the change in rate of the reaction. 4 to the x equals 4. Therefore, x is equal to 1. Any number raised to the first power will equal that number. Now return to the original rate law where rate was equal to K times the concentration of fluorine gas raised to some power times the concentration of chlorine dioxide raised to some power. We may now replace the Y with the 1. In this particular case, in terms of reaction order, this reaction is first order in terms of chlorine dioxide. To determine the exponent associated with fluorine gas, let's use trials 3 and 1. During trials 3 and 1, the concentration of chlorine dioxide is being held constant. To determine the exponent associated with fluorine gas, simply divide the rate associated with trial 3 by the rate associated with trial 1. This will give a factor of 2. Also, divide the concentration of the fluorine gas during trial 3 by the concentration of the fluorine gas during trial 1. This will give a factor of 2. To calculate the exponent, simply raise the change in concentration, which is 2, or the concentration was doubled, to x, and set that equal to the change in rate, which the rate was doubled, so the number is 2. 2 to the x equals 2. In this case, x equals 1. Because the concentration of fluorine gas and chlorine dioxide were both raised to the first power, this reaction is first order in terms of fluorine gas and first order in terms of chlorine dioxide. However, the overall order of the reaction is 2. To find the overall reaction order, we add 1 plus 1, which will give an overall reaction order of 2. Now that a proper rate law has been written, it is possible to calculate the value of K. In this case, K is equal to the rate divided by the concentration of fluorine gas times the concentration of chlorine dioxide. Now the data from any trial may be used to calculate the value of K. Let's simply take the data from trial 1, where the concentration of F2 is 0.01 molar, 
and the concentration of ClO2 is 0.01 mole. And the rate was found to be 1.2 times 10 to the minus 3 mole. By inserting this information into the formula, the value of K is determined to be 12 molar per second divided by molar square over 1. Simplifying the units will get a value of 12 molar to the minus 1 second to the minus 1. Now that the proper rate law has been written and the value of K has been determined, it is possible to calculate the rate of this reaction at any concentration of reactants. For example, suppose the concentration of fluorine gas was 0.1 molar and the concentration of chlorine dioxide was 0.05 molar. The rate may now be calculated by multiplying 12 molar to the minus 1 second to the minus 1 times 0 0.10 molar times 0 0.05 molar. Notice that molar to the minus 1 will cancel molar. Therefore, the final answer will be 6.0 times 10 to the minus 2 molar per second. The units for K were determined as follows, where 12 molar per second divided by molar square over 1 is equal to 12 molar per second times 1 over molar square. Molar square will cancel molar. Therefore, these units may be simplified as follows, 12 1 over molar times second. Or, we could simply write 12 molar to the minus 1, second to the minus 1.